In this question, you have to find the smallest positive integer and the largest negative integer for which the difference between the square of five more than this number and the cube of one more than the number exceeds 22. So you have to make the equation first of all. And so starting with, if you let x equal the number, so five more than this number, that's going to be x plus five. And then the difference between the square of five more than this number, so the square of five more than this number, the difference between that and the cube of one more than the number. So one more than the number is going to be x plus one and then the cube of that. So the difference between those two things exceeds 22. In other words, is more than 22. And then you just got to from there, expand all this out and see what you get to start with. So expanding this, you get x squared plus 10x plus 25 in brackets. So x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus and then that's all going to be more than 22 minus x cubed that's the first term and then x squared minus positive 3x squared becomes x squared minus 3x squared which is minus 2x squared then 10x minus 3x is plus 7x and then the numbers last of all 25 minus 1 equals positive 24 and that's all more than 22 and from there I want to minus this 22 I'm going to do get rid of this minus here by timesing everything by minus 1 so that becomes x cubed plus 2x squared and then minus 7x and then minus 2 and then this sign has to reverse when you do that whenever you multiply an inequality uh, divide or multiply by a negative number the sign reverses and you get that and you can use the factor theorem by doing p of 2 and when you do that you end up with 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared is another 2 cubed which happens to be 8 minus 7 times 2 which is 14 and then minus 2 this is 8 plus 8 is 16 minus 14 minus 2 and that all equals 0 so that means x minus 2 is a factor and then in the other bracket, you're going to have x squared here. x times x squared gives you that x cubed term. This is a way of factorizing this once you found the first factor or a factor. So, and I knew to chose P2 because you always look at this number here and whatever the factors of that, you need to go P of uh, one of those factors uh, until you find the right one. And if none of them work, then that means that that doesn't have a linear factor like this. So x squared and then minus two times what number equals this? And the answer to that is positive one. So plus one and all of that's gonna be less than zero. And then there's going to be an x term here. And I'll call it question mark x. So when you multiply these two brackets out whatever happens to be in this one multiplied by that which you know is a factor you're going to get this cubic function here and so a way of finding this question mark here is to go well that times that equals minus 2x squared and you get another x squared term when you multiply these two brackets out by going that x term times that x term so that's going to give you plus question mark x squared so x times x is x squared and the unknown here. And when you combine those two terms, you end up with this x squared term up here. So from there, you can see that this has to be four. So minus two x squared plus four x squared equals positive two x squared. So that number is going to be four. And so you ultimately end up with x plus two in that first bracket. And then x squared plus four x is less than zero. Now this, you can factorize this, you end up with thirds, and it's a long and involved process and we'll give you the x-intercepts. Uh, the quick way is just look at the graph, which is what I did from here. So the graph looks something like, and so this here is, uh, or are the intercepts and 
this one here is positive 2 from that bracket and then from these two you get decimal values and they are between and I'll mark this in a different color so the nearest whole number left of this one is minus 4 so this one here minus 4 and then minus 3 here and then minus 1 is on this side of this one and so I'll mark them in so this is minus 1 this is minus 3 and this one is minus 4 for the x values okay so now you need to figure out what x values will make this true so when you sub an x value into here then the final number that you get is a y value so whatever x value you sub in you want x values that are going to make the y value that you get less than zero so negative y values here correspond to the bits on the graph that are below the x-axis so what x values in particular so looking at this one first the smallest positive integer so that's going to be the smallest positive whole number value for x that belongs to this part of the curve here and that's x equals 1 so when x equals 1 on the graph it has well it's that's the coordinate x coordinate at this point here x equals 1 and y is negative something this value x equals 2 if you were to sub that into here, 2 minus 2 equals 0. 0 times whatever that bracket equals is equal to 0, which is not less than 0. So that 2 would not be, well, even if it was a solution, the 1 would be the smallest positive integer that x could be that would make uh, this equation or make this side of the equation be less than 0. So that, in fact, is the first answer, x equals 1. That's the smallest positive integer and the largest negative integer. So on this part of the graph here, all the x values are negative and all the y values are also negative. And as you go further to the left, the x values are getting smaller. And that means that x equals minus 4 on that graph, which is, let's say here, the y value is also negative. And this minus 4, the x value of minus 4, is in fact the biggest value of x, the biggest negative value of x, negative integer value of x that has a corresponding or makes the y value negative. So remember when you have this um, on your calculator, this intercept here is between minus 4 and minus 3, so that's definitely going to be the biggest. Uh, whole number negative whole negative number value for x on the graph uh, where the y value is negative that's the other value of x that well it's the this value the largest negative integer value which makes this statement true which makes that true which makes this true so these two are the correct answers for this question and that's pretty much how you do this question. It's quite a tricky one. With worded questions, make sure you read them carefully and read them as many times as you need to to find how to set up the equations because that's usually the hardest part. And for this one, it was a little tricky because you had to kind of work backwards uh, from, or well, the way I did it, it, did it right at the start, starting with five more than this number and then going back to the square of that and then the difference between that and so on. And so yeah, they can be quite tricky, but make sure you read them enough times so that you can figure out how to set up the equation from it. So that's how you do this question.